This is one of my favorite mobility drills for baseball players because it hits so many areas that I find are really important to them. Also, it's done in the uh, frontal plane, and if you think about it, we spend a lot of time in the sagittal plane, and then when we're, we're working with rotational athletes, we think about the transverse plane, but not as much in the, in the frontal plane. So while we're in that plane, we get to work on hip mobility, stability, uh, we're even working on dorsiflexion, but most importantly, we're working on this transfer of center of mass from one hip to the other. And in my experience, I found that so many baseball players are stuck, so many human beings are stuck more in one hip than they are the other. So the opportunity to work on that, I mean, think about how that, um, that works into performance. When we're batting, we have to transfer the weight from one hip to the other in our swing. Also during pitching and even fielding, we have to go back and forth. So let me show you the exercise. The setup is a straddle. And I always tell guys, you want a straddle that's a little bit wider than your batting stance. Very important because the feet are a window into what's going on in the hips that the feet are not only even, because I don't want one hip pushed, or the pelvis rotated and one hip pushed forward, but also that the feet aren't out like this, because that means that obviously the hips would be externally rotated. So almost pigeon-toed. And then we're just simply going to lateral lunge back and forth. We start there, um, moving the weight from where it is right now in the center. Exhale, bring it over into the right hip. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, bring it over. Now I keep going back and forth. Really important to stay with the breath and take an inventory of how you feel as you move into each hip. Are you feeling the glute the same way, the hip flexor the same way? I do that probably four to six times. And then we progress into this. So we inhale, exhale, take the ribs down, come all the way down, and then externally rotate this hip, dorsiflex this foot. Now, here's an important thing. So. Not everyone's going to have the hip mobility and dorsiflexion to keep this heel down, so they might be here. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is to enable coming down, having them drop the hip in, or um, open the hip up and drop the heel in. So I would still want this hip to be neutral, albeit it's very flexed, right? But I want either the heel down or up on the toes, but no external rotation. Now, we know our center of mass is sitting over here in the right hip. Now I can do this with the heel down, so I'm gonna stay here with the heel down. But now I'm gonna move my center of mass from this hip over to the left hip. I stay low, and then see how this foot is dorsiflexed? It's just going to go straight forward. So now the toes are pointed straight forward, my knee tracks right above my ankle, and then this is important, I didn't lean into this hip though, and, um, and and lose that outer edge of my foot. So I continue to stabilize with this leg even though the weight is more in my left hip. Now I'm going to inhale and take it back. And I'm here. This is where you get to work on the dorsiflexion because as you're coming over this way, stay back in the hip, keep this heel down as long as you possibly can, and then if you have to, you'll lift. But again, just don't let that hip externally rotate. So I go back and forth through that three times. This is the inhale, this is the exhale. Then, if you want to progress, we make it into yoga and we come on up into a warrior two. Nothing changed about my um, the lower half of my body, so I stabilized through my pelvis and my hips and my legs. If I want to, I can inhale, take it back. This is called reverse warrior. Still don't lose this stability in the lower body. Exhale, take it back down. Inhale, I'm back here. Now, I internally rotate, and I come back to my starting stance, except my knees are bent, I'm really deep in my hips, I like to do a little bounce there. So you make sure that the feet are in that starting position. Now, if I want to switch over to this left hip, I could do it from here, or I'll come all the way up. So let me show you both ways. I could come over like this, externally rotate this hip, or I could bring it up, and then exhale, come back down, Inhale, externally rotate here. And then same thing. Exhale, I come over. Inhale, I come back. I work on that dorsiflexion, leaving the heel down as long as I possibly can and coming up the last minute if I have to. 
And then, same thing, if you want to progress into that warrior two after you've done three back and forths, go for it, reverse warrior. And then we internally rotate, we come back to this stance, a little bit of a bounce, deep in the hips, almost pigeon toed here, inhale, bring it up. And that's it. I gave you a lot of explanation, but the devil is in the details because if they externally rotate a hip or we end up with a foot forward, then what's the point of the exercise? Because we're doing it from a dysfunctional position. So pay attention to those details. Try it out. Let me know how it goes.